the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BT ZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. All right, welcome back here to the Weekend Sports Wrap. So here with the Duckman, and I've got a special guest on Troy Warner from the Paracave Podcast. Troy, how are you going? Going fantastic, Duckman. Staying dry inside here at the moment. It's torrential rain outside for Sydney listeners. So, yeah, stay safe, listeners, in this wet weather. Yeah, anyone that's out and about, yeah, be careful because yeah, the floodwaters are bad. So uh, not sure what you have planned tomorrow. I was supposed to go to the State Gymnastics Championships at Rudy Hill, but uh, yeah, not able to make it because I've got commitments, unfortunately, to TAFE. That would have been uh, exciting. I'm not sure if you heard the interview that I did with young Rhythm uh, Malik on Friday night the other day, but that was a pretty good interview, and he told me, He's a big Paramount fan himself. Oh, really? Okay. No, I haven't had a listen to that, but uh, now that you've mentioned that, I'll definitely have to go back and have a, have a listen to that for sure. And uh, yeah. who knows? Maybe might even get him on my podcast uh, for a chat about his support for the Eels. Oh, oh definitely, definitely be able to do that. So, yeah, he's a pretty keen, uh, fervent fan. Knew a fair bit about the NRL, so uh, he is interested in it for sure. So you were at the game on Monday, the Easter Monday disaster. <laughs> the Eels up against West Tigers. The Tigers got up 17-16. You pointed a stat out to me what that the Eels have lost um, or only won three of the last 11 matches after losing to the Tigers. That's a pretty bad start, really. It is. It is, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, it's not a very good one to have. So this weekend will be very interesting to see how the Eels go. But, look, on Easter Monday, the traditional Easter Monday game, um, it was interesting, and it was the first game without Mitchell Moses at halfback due to his fractured foot. So I think uh, that's going to be an interesting one for sure, how the Parramatta can bounce back into that one. Um, And I think... Yeah, the Eels, they probably, I think Brad Arthur said in the press conference that they were probably chasing a soft win, and just in the NRL, you cannot do that. Every game is a hard game, so you shouldn't treat any win as a soft win or try to, uh, any team as a soft team. And look, he changed the bench rotation. Junior Paolo started this game in during the previous three games he's come off the bench and I think that's been a bit of a mind stro- uh, master stroke because uh, having RCG and Junior off at the same time is lose a bit of momentum so he changed that one up I don't know why uh, but the Tigers they look really hungry for the the win I think they always step up for this game on Easter Monday especially and they had a good win the week before against the Sharks so they were in form and uh, Benji got them up, and Lachlan Galvin, 18-year-old, uh, stepped up, especially after his 10 minutes in the sin bin for a hip drop tackle. Yeah, so I, I saw the hip drop tackle. Didn't didn't look right. You know, it just looks like tackles, the old tackles back in the day. He did drop his weight onto the leg, so I get the whole point of it, but it's, that's the way some of these smaller blokes tackle, right? I, I'm pretty sure Alan Langer did the same sort of thing used to drop his leg out in front of people to help pull him to the ground back in the day. Uh, if he didn't do that, he probably wouldn't have been able to tackle players. So uh, they kept modifying all these rules. So um, I get the whole point if you've got player injuries and that stuff. My question will be now for the NRL, how many people have been injured from a hip drop tackle? But I'd, I'd love to see the stats on that. How many have actually been injured so they can't play the next week or following week? So I'm not sure what that looks like. And the other thing, Lachlan Galvin... Um, <laughs> they're saying that he's like up could be rated as seven hundred fifty thousand dollars player. He only played like two games or something. How are they throwing around these numbers already and saying he's a future potential Origin player and stuff? 
Oh, I think they're just going off potential um, at the moment, uh, definitely, and I hope that the media isn't putting that much pressure on the young boy, but um, he certainly stepped that up on Monday, and as you said, I, I think that hip drop tackle that he did on Kelma Tuolagi, I think it was... I don't know, a bit of more of a reflex action and just trying to, a small man trying to bring down a big man. But um, unfortunately in this game, you just cannot do that sort of thing. I know that um, I think Jackson Hastings has suffered injury from a hip drop tackle. I think Hayes Dunster in a trial game has suffered injury from a hip drop tackle. So there certainly is a few tackles there that have happened that do require um uh, they do have injuries uh, from it and have time out of the game. Look, the hip drop tackles for me are a really sort of difficult one because I believe that these sort of tackles have been around since day dot and it's just now that players are getting injured that um, they're, try- they're trying to stamp the- this tackle out of the game. So now that the players are getting injured from them, uh, they're more noticeable. But look, I, I don't think... At this point in time, Lockwood Galvin is a $750,000 player, but certainly if he can keep up his potential that he's worth, uh, um, that he has shown, that he showed on Monday, then I think definitely he potentially could be a future future origin player and his contract definitely go up. Funnily, funnily enough, he is a Parramatta supporter growing up. And uh, he was playing against his childhood team that he supported. So uh, a bit of a funny one. And also a Parramatta Junior too. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I saw that the, I saw that the other day. I'm wondering who the Parramatta coach was. So this happens in juniors, <laughs> but someone said, mate, I've only got 13 spots on the field and you're not getting one of them. You're not good enough to be in one of them. Like, that, that's a fair call. If you're not good enough, like, he might not have been good enough at the time. But it doesn't mean he's not good enough now. But the media... They're looking for stories, right? So they'll find whatever edge they can get. So there are plenty of times when I wasn't good enough to do different things either and then kicked on and been able to do other stuff in my life. So, like, I think they're beating something that's not there, right, making a story that's not really there. But that's, that's what you got to do, right? So you sell papers by having a bit of controversy. So they have uh, indeed done that. Uh, playing wise, I think you need at least three really good seasons to show he's worth that money. He might well... He might well do that, right? Not heaps of people do, so I hope that he is uh, one of the exceptions to the rule and he can kick on and do a good job of West Tigers. Uh, let's get into this game last night. So <laughs> I didn't, I didn't see it because I was in, cause I didn't see it because I was in TAFE. So it's burning me that I was in TAFE doing stuff. Um, every time in TAFE on Thursday nights, there's a cracking <laughs> Thursday night game. So in this one, so. Is it right that the Broncos were up at half time and the Storm came back to beat them 34 32? Because I was so close to picking the Broncos, went, Oh, I don't know if Cameron Munster's probably a bit undone. I don't know if I'll pick him. And I did end up picking him reluctantly. And then they won and done what the Storm do, right? So they just smoked the team. Um, and now Brisbane look like they've got big holes all over the place because Adam Reynolds is out. So I don't know. They need to think about what they're going to do to replace him in the future because he's not going to keep playing forever. Yeah, that's uh, that's a big one there. Adam Reynolds, uh, just before half time, uh, suffered a potential hamstring injury, and he was devastated in the sheds. He was, I think, in tears in the sheds, uh, knowing what had happened to him uh, and his hamstring. So I'm sure he probably maybe get back to Brisbane and have scans on that and just see the extent of the damage. So uh, that's a big blow for the Broncos because no doubt he'll be out for a few weeks and they've currently got Payne Haas and Reese Walsh out as well at the moment. But they showed last night with those two out uh, and then Adam Reynolds not returning after half time that they can really mix it with the best. And look, this was a cracker of a game. Uh, Brisbane were up at half time, 18 points to 16, so it was still a close game then. And um, it was just seesawing up and down, up and down, and it still could have been anybody's game. It wasn't until Tyron Wishart scored a try for uh, the Melbourne Storm that 
it looked like Melbourne were going to go on to win this game. He got the ball over the line, and uh, a lot of people thought that he didn't, but he was very confident, and replays did show that he did get the ball down, and then uh, Jerome Hughes scored a try uh, after him as well, So, which gave them a little bit more of a lead. Uh, the Brisbane side, they scored a try 77th minute, so... They got within two points, but, geez, it was a cracker of a game. It was almost like a semi-final game, probably definitely the game of the year at the moment, and it just shows you how, I guess, in front these two teams are, along with Penrith, I guess, at the moment as well, uh, how they are in front of the rest of the opposition, or the competition, I should say. No, oh, they are by a fair mile, right? So, like, I saw it when I was at the gym watch Penrith um, after being on air. Penrith take on the Storm, and it was, like, yeah, Storm up 2-0 to, what, 70-something minutes before they picked up try. Penrith had a couple of disallowed tries. One of them maybe could have been a try on another day, but there you go. That's just the way the obstruction things are working at the moment. And in the end, the Storm got the... So, Penrith didn't get a try. The Storm got a try. They won the game. But... They're good sides, Melbourne, Penrith and Brisbane. They can grind teams into the ground and they can also take it up an extra level and do what they need to do to put points on too. So if you're going to level peg with them, so I'd say they're still the three best sides. I, I think the Roosters really are looking like they're probably going to drop off here a bit now, uh, particularly tonight. We'll chat about that in a second. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there, there's a level, there is an obvious level between uh, Penrith the Storm and the Broncos and the rest of the comp is just a level there's a level between them so uh, if the other teams that play them are not on their game on the day you're going to get beaten by any of those three sides 100% for sure yeah definitely correct there uh, other than those three sides there probably hasn't been a, a standout I mean, Manly won their first two games but have fallen away. The Raiders won their first two games and then have fallen away. Um, The Sharks have been sort of a little bit of a surprise packet. They got thumped by the Tigers a couple of weeks ago. Uh, That was only their mishap there. But, yeah, no, you're definitely right there that those three sides that you mentioned are probably a little bit in front now of the rest of the competition and they're going to have the rest of the competition is going to have to step up to get to their level. Yep, so the Roosters fans will love me here. The Bulldogs are taking on the Roosters now and the Bulldogs are up 26 points to 6, uh, 51 minutes in. The question is, how many more weeks until Trent Robinson gets sacked? <laughs> well, so duck- if, if you want a message in, 0434 let me know your opinions because... Uh, I'm interested to know. So, he, well, I genuinely think he's under the pump. He might have a job for life. Is that always going to be his head coach? But because they didn't sign, like Nick Politis didn't sign Justin Holbrook just to sit there forever, right, as an assistant coach. Well, I, I tend to disagree with you, Duckman. I think Trent Robinson will be there as long as he wants to be there. Uh, Uncle Nick is a very loyal man, and once he gets the man that he wants, then they tend to stay there. So I think he'll uh, be there for as long as he wants. And, look, this is an interesting game for sure. Um, at the moment, it's 26 points to 12, so the Roosters have come back in the second half. But what a first half. It's a... a the Bulldogs are wearing their heritage jerseys from the 2004 season. These two clubs played in the 2004 Grand Final at the same venue. So the Bulldogs have gone back to those jerseys, and I must say they look fantastic, the old Bulldogs jerseys. Uh, they've got the collar and the blue V at the front, and they've done a really good job there. So... Um, Look, it all happened in the first half. Canterbury got off to a flyer of a start. Uh, Blake Taft scored the first try, and then lots of drama happened after that. Luke Keery, uh, Luke Keery, sorry. Um, I guess I'm just a bit used to seeing him have a HIA, but um, Sam Walker suffered a HIA, and he hasn't returned. He, he won't return for the rest of the game. Uh, James Tedesco also suffered a concussion and he won't re- be returning for the rest of the game. So the 18th and 19th men have been activated and the 18th man for 
the Roosters is Michael Jennings. Uh, he hasn't played a game, I think, in about four years, three, four years, um, due to a suspension. And so he's playing in this game. Um, so, And then, of course, Dom Young has been sent off as well for a tackle on Blake Taff. So, and Taff won't be returning for the Bulldogs tonight. So the first send-off of 2024... Uh, Dom Young, he, he flew out of the line and caught uh, Blake high, and uh, there was no no questions asked by Grant Atkins. He basically just said, you flew out of the line, you caught him high, you're off. So the first send-off there. So it was 20, 26 points nil to nil at half time. So an unbelievable effort by the Bulldogs, and the Roosters have come back in the second half and scored Two try, two converted tries. So there's still 27 minutes to go. So hopefully for Bulldogs fans, they can hold on. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm hoping they can too because they, they need the confidence, right? So they've got good players. I think Stephen Crichton's made a massive difference to the side because he's got that a winning edge mentality and the X factor. So he's one of a few players in the comp that could actually be a full X factor player wherever they went. Right, he has the ability. I think that Cameron Munster has the ability. Before Ryan Pappenhausen got injured, I think he did. Uh, perhaps say that uh, Nathan Cleary does, so where he goes. There's, there's a few guys that can do it. There's not that many, right? So I think there'd be less than 10 across the whole comp that could go somewhere and go, we need something to happen. They would be the guy, right? So there's not that many. That's why the, the best of the best are worth so much money, right? Because they're highly invaluable to their teams. Uh, the Bulldogs, I'm sure they took it very well when Dom Young threw the high um, high shot at um, <laughs> Lake Taff, and that's why his jersey's completely torn in half like he's in WWE wrestling. <laughs> so, yeah, the Bulldogs look like they, they normally take those things really well. So, uh, <laughs> so what happened there? It looked like it got into a bit of a Barney or something after that. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, obviously the Bulldogs players didn't like the, the tackle and, uh, yeah, a little bit of a push and shove has happened as in these days you can't throw punches at all. So, you know, the push and shove starts to happen and um, so that's what happened and uh, Dom Young has now got a ripped jersey and as you mentioned before we came on air, that's a bit of a collector's item now for somebody, some Roosters fan. I'm sure Dom doesn't want it any anymore, so uh, maybe some Roosters fan will, will want it uh, as a collectible. Yeah, if anyone's listening out there, uh, happy to hit me up if you want. Uh, DuckmanHGINews.com.au or you can hit me up here, 0434 Get Joey Manu to sign it too. And Dom Young, I would actually, that would be pretty good. I'll frame it and hang it up there. So want something like that would be interesting uh, memorabilia to have. Uh, all right. So the next game, the Knights and the Dragons. So that's tonight at 8 o'clock. At the moment, uh, interim-wise, I would think that Knights look like they're going to do the business here pretty easy against the Dragons. I didn't think the Knights were too bad against Warriors last week. Uh, the Warriors were pretty good, and the Dragons weren't too bad against the Seagulls either. Just looked like the Seagulls got bored in the game, and the Dragons just stayed on focus. Yeah, look, this is going to be an interesting one. Two clubs that have uh, been up and down in the season so far, and look, the Dragons have got a really good record up at uh, Newcastle, so um, this could be a danger game for Newcastle with that record. I know stats going into games sometimes don't really mean anything. It's on the day that counts, but uh, Newcastle, they're sitting in 15th position at the moment, the Dragons in 13th, so it's a must-win game for Newcastle to get their season back on track and uh, get that win, and they go into this game as favourites, but as I mentioned, the Dragons... They've played some pretty good footy this year. They started off with a massive win in in first up. They lost the second round. Uh, they held the Cowboys. Uh, they were leading the Cowboys, I think, 18-0 at one stage and then unfortunately got run down. And then they had that good win against Manly. Uh, as you said, Manly, they scored the first try and 
um, just never got back into the game. The Dragons wanted it more. I think the Dragons grow an extra leg down in uh, Wollongong at Wynn Stadium. Um, that's what I think anyway. And they really turned it on and got the win there. So, look, this will be an interesting clash. I think I've tipped Newcastle to win this game. Uh, but it could be a close one. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so a question for you about the Dragons. How good do we think the Cowboys are at the moment? Because I know they got tapped up against Brisbane last week. They had a couple of easy games in the first couple of weeks. Uh, do we think that perhaps uh, they just really turned it up against the Dragons? Maybe the Dragons are a lot better than what they've been doing at the moment. A bit hard to gauge really early in the season where teams are at until they've probably played six or so matches. Yeah, well, three straight wins for the Cowboys and then, as you said, got beat by the Broncos. Coach Todd Payton said that uh, his team probably couldn't beat the Tamora Dragons after um, <laughs> their performance against the Broncos. So they would have had an interesting week at training, no doubt, and they're back at home this weekend, which we'll talk about soon, and um, uh, the, the, another Queensland derby. So um, that they're getting... Th- Back to their 2022 form, that's for sure, after last year's disappointment. Yep. So we're going to roll into the next game now, Rabbitohs against Warriors. I think the Rabbitohs are going to strike blood here and get another win. So they've got the calibre of players, a good enough calibre to get the job done. I just think they're out of touch and maybe out of nick. They look like they're out of nick or something. As soon as things don't go 100% right for them, kind of like the wheels fall off the bus and that goes all real bad but if they get up against Warriors and get in front and get a couple of tries up I think they probably will roll on with it momentum wise. If you want to let the Warriors get in front I think you're going to have a hard day no matter who you are in the comp. Yeah look this is going to be a, a toss of the ga- coin game I think. Uh, the Rabbitohs they got their first win of the season last week against the Bulldogs on Good Friday, the Warriors as well. They've been probably the team that have been the most impressive losers uh, at the start of the year. They had a good win last week against Newcastle. Roger Tuivasa Shek was playing back at fullback and absolutely nailed it. 275 run metres, I think it was. And um, Chance Nickel Clockstar is back this week at fullback, which is probably the right thing to do considering he was the first choice fullback last season and we all saw how the Warriors played last year. But the Warriors are going to maybe struggle this week because Murata Neokore, Dallin Watelli, Zalesniak, Kurt Capel, and Luke Metcalf, who unfortunately broke his leg last week, are all out. So some big outs there. I think Dallin did a hamstring at training. Um, I'm not too sure about Murata. So they've had some late-minute changes um, a day out from the game. Um, uh, Adam Pompey comes into the centre position and uh, Bunty Afoa comes into the prop position as well for a couple of those players there. So And, and uh, Chanel Harris-Tavita comes onto the interchange bench. So they've had a few changes to their side. Um, as I said, this could be a toss-of-the-coin game. Uh, I have tipped the Warriors, I think, to win this game, but it could be... I could go the other way, but it's going to be very close. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I took the Rabbitohs because they were at home, but I was tossing that up either way. Uh, I don't think the Warriors are quite there yet, so they haven't quite got it all strung together. So if Souths play well, they should be able to get the points here. Uh, this one, so it tore me again. So like the Roosters did last week against Pemmer, if I thought uh, Pemmer should be able to win, but uh, realistically I'm missing a few blokes. And Roosters should be able to get business done. They didn't last week. Uh, you, same could be said for uh, Manly this weekend. The rain, if I had a name, it was raining like it is. I might not have bet on Pem- I might not have tipped Pemmerf, so if I did tip Pemmerf. But uh, the Seagulls, if they can get their stuff together and it actually rains a fair bit, I reckon that might be enough to disrupt Pemmerf this weekend and they probably will get away with the points. Yeah, well, now that the weather has is going to play a part because I do believe Saturday is going to be worse than Friday with the with the rain. So, 
at Four Pines Park, Brookvale Oval for the Purists. Um, the Sea Eagles, like the Dragons in Wollongong, they seem to play a little bit better, as does every team, I guess, at home. Uh, but the Sea Eagles as well, they've turned. Sometimes they can turn that into a fortress and get some results there. Um, Congratulations to DCE, Daily Cherry Evans. He breaks the playing record of Cliff Lyons, 309 games. So Daly plays his 310th game for Manly. So he becomes the highest games played record holder for Manly. So that's a, a huge honour there. Um, this is going to be an interesting game with, with Brad Schneider again at halfback. But the big in for... Uh, Penrith is James Fisher Harris comes back into the prop position. Um, good news for Penrith fans. Mitch Kenny has re signed, I think, for another three years. So that's a good signing for them as well. So, um, yeah, look, I did tip Penrith in this game. Um, I think just the way they're playing, they showed it last week with Nathan out and James Fisher Harris out. Um, that they've got that next man up mentality. Uh, I think the dra- uh, the Sea Eagles really struggled against the Dragons. They'll be keen to get back into their we- uh, first couple of weeks' form, but I think Penrith will get the win in this one. Yeah, that's right. So Penrith were missing three players last week, James Fisher-Harris, Nathan Cleary. I can't remember who the third was, uh, basically missing three first-grade players. If you strip three good, uh, the two, like the best forward or one of the best two forwards out of a team, uh, the best back to any team, <laughs> and then uh, say do your best. Uh, there'll be a lot of sides that'll have different outcomes, right? So you'd see some of the sides at the bottom of the table would actually do pretty well because you level a side right out once you start taking players out. But Pembroke, I think you'd have to take about five guys out. Like you'd have to start getting into uh, Moses Leota, Isaiah Yo as well, and like if you strip them out and. Dylan Walker is, uh, sorry, Dylan Edwards as well. If you took about five or six players out, then you could say, oh, Pembroke are going to have problems. <laughs> but, like, if you took the best five or six players out of any club, they're all going to have problems, really, uh, aren't they? Yeah, for sure. I think Scott Sorensen was the other player that was out last week, and Maverick Guy, uh, MG's son, another MG, Maverick, uh, he made his debut, so he goes into jersey number 20 on the extended bench. So... Um, I think that's the one you were thinking of for last week. Yeah, it would have been, yeah. So, uh, and Maverick Guy had a good game too he from did. Uh, did. what uh, so from what I saw. Uh, the next game here, so this was the unlikely ladder leaders, funnily enough. Uh, <laughs> the Dolphins up against the unlikely one, the form sides at a comp two West Tigers. Who would have thought you'd be talking about both of them too? Uh, being like in decent form and that. So, like, yeah. West Tigers have done it before, but they're always considered to be in disarray. So, I actually am beating the drum for them a fair bit. I like that they're uh, going through a bit of a resurgence at the moment. It, uh, I can't see it being all season long. I just don't think it will be. I don't think they've got the depth of quality at the moment, uh, but it's a working project. So, uh, but Benji Marshall, he needs to keep on winning because if he gets bad results this year, the Tigers fans are going to start trying to spear him, right? So, because they, they want success. They've had a very lean time since they won the comp back in 2005. Uh, the Dolphins, on the other hand, I think they look very, very good and they're just building nicely. Christian Wolf would be happy. Uh, still don't think they're going to make the top eight. I think they're going to be more like the uh, same as last, about 13, 14, something like that. Unfortunately, even though they're doing pretty well, they're going to keep improving over time. But I think they're missing a big X factor player too. Yeah, well, I think they tried to. Well, they have signed Herbie Farmworth as a bit of an X factor player. He's slowly settling into the Dolphins' way of life. His battle with Justin Olam will be a one to watch. That's for sure. Um, and look, the Tigers. Well, the part-time coach Benji Marshall is certainly doing well. Two wins in a row. I think that's the first time he's. The Tigers have done that in a while, and they sit themselves in sixth position on the ladder at the moment. And as you said, they could be one of the form teams of the competition at the moment, having won the last two weeks against two big scalps, the Sharks and the Eels. Unfortunately, as we mentioned before, Lachlan Galvin will be out of this game, suspended for that hip drop tackle, so that's a a big loss for them. So Jaden Sullivan comes into that 5'8 spot 
uh, who started off the year at halfback. Aiden Caesar is the halfback. Um, so this one up at Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane. The Dolphins, they may struggle through the origin period coming up um, in a few weeks' time. Uh, they'll have a few origin representatives, but certainly at the moment, that's where they need to get those get those early wins, um, get those points banked, and uh, th- as they may struggle through that period. But uh, I've tipped the Dolphins in this game uh, as it's up there. Uh, interesting thing there is Benji's coaching the Tigers up against the Wayne Bennett coached Dolphins. So... Uh, I think it's probably about the third, fourth, maybe the fifth time that Wayne Bennett has coached against another team of a player that has played under him. So um, that would be very interesting indeed. Yeah, it's right. And I think it's the first time that Benji Marshall's coached against his brother too. So who That's is right. in the other yes. side there, Jeremy Marshall King. Yeah, interesting there. I think the reporters, the journalists were trying to ask him at the press conference against the Eels, um, how's that going to go for you? Are you going to contact him or anything like that? So I, I don't think he will, but I'm sure they'll catch up on uh, after the game on Saturday night for sure. No, they will more than likely. I, I can't yeah, think of any other... I can't think of any other uh, brothers that have done that, to be honest. Yeah, one's uh, been a no, coach and one's been a player. I can't think of any. Trying to, yeah, I'm, I think I'd have to reach deep into the memory bank to think about that. I, that, I wouldn't think so. They might be um, the first ones. Yeah, they, they would go very close, I can tell you that right now. So with Lachlan Galvin, they are talking about on Big Sports Breakfast yesterday, uh, Laurie Daly brought up uh, with Steve Roach that they think that clubs will need to develop their own halfbacks now because there's a... Uh, uh, real lack of it, and they weren't criticised Naden Caesar, but literally said that he's coming towards the end of his career, and he knows that as well. Uh, he's doing a job for West Tigers. Um, they think that it's going to be very hard to pick up or buy halfbacks for any time in the future because it's just so hard to get them. So people have to develop their own or look inside their own ranks. So they're talking about the Bulldogs as well, and. Yeah, what, what all those pictures will look like for different clubs. So we're interested to see what will happen and who will emerge in the next couple of years too through the ranks at, right across all the clubs. Yeah, look, I think these days you're, you're right. I think clubs will have to look within their own as for the future of their club and, and halfbacks, that, that's for sure. I think these days not a lot of good quality halfbacks are on the markets each year. I think once clubs get a good one and they're impressed with them, they they tend to keep them and and the good ones tend to re-sign with their clubs for long-term deals. I mean, Mitchell Moses, Nathan Cleary um, have have signed long-term deals. Uh, Jerome Hughes will be the the Melbourne Storm halfback for a long time. Um, so there's not a lot of good halfbacks that come onto the market each and every year, as we've seen with the Tigers, the Dragons, and uh, probably the Bulldogs as well when they've tried to go into the market to get those players. Um, so, yeah, they'll definitely have to uh, build one from their junior ranks at their clubs, and I think that's the way to go these days. I think um, uh, and uh, a good example is... Ethan Sanders, from the, who plays at the Eels at the moment in the New South Wales Cup, I think there's talk that he'll go to Canberra um, next season uh, for the future after Jamal Fogarty uh, retires or um, just a bit more depth there as well. Um, but, yeah, certainly clubs will have to develop their own. And I think it's only getting better these days at the development of young players I think with all the um, facilities that clubs have these days and coaches and and the like and the pathway systems that they're just getting better and better yeah that's right so let's look at uh, some good examples from back in the 90s so Newcastle were very very good at developing halfbacks back in the day they had Andrew Johns plus Brett Kamali plus Matthew Rodwell plus Justin Holbrook literally in in and around the same time period so how happy would those blokes be coming through now? Like Andrew Johns is Newcastle forever. 
let's look at the rest. Brett Kamali, Matthew Rodwell, even Justin Holbrook. He wasn't the world's best halfback ever, but he's very solid. These guys would be 150, 200 plus game players. Now, easy because of uh, the skill they bring to the game and what they do. Uh, and Noddy was one of the best halfbacks probably that played in the competition too, ever as well. So that when they look at it long term, I think Cronulla will rate him right up there and probably Melbourne Storm as well. Uh, the next game here, Sunday, 4.05 p.m., got uh, the Cowboys against the, I have to say, the hapless Titans. They are hapless at the moment. They are getting absolutely tapped. Uh, I think that Des Hasler is going to have a hard time. I actually have a bad feeling that uh, he might last a short period of time before he gets dismissed. Um, not hoping he does get dismissed. I just think that if it's not looking real good at the end of the year, that they'll probably give him a whole year too because of his reputation, Des Hasler. If he can't turn it around, make them relatively competitive by the end of the year, he might have a whole bunch of problems keeping his job. It's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, a new coach at a new club, do you only give them one year? Um, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, but it is a results-driven business, so it can be cutthroat at times, but I think Des will see out the year and be there next year as well. The Titans, they're probably the club in crisis at the moment. I mean, everyone was talking about South Sydney a few weeks ago, and... Um, They've sort of slowly just gone under the radar, South Sydney at the moment, because uh, they had that win against the Bulldogs. But the Titans, they've only had the buy points. They haven't won a game this year. So then they've lost big captain, uh, big Tino for the year with a ACL injury as well. Thankfully, though, for them, Jaden Campbell comes back at fullback. And... Um, there was, and David Fafida has come back as well. He played his first game last week. He's back on the interchange bench again as well. So, um, good news for them with those two players coming back. But this will be tough against the Cowboys back up there at um, North Queensland Country Bank Stadium in Townsville. Uh, they would have had, both teams would have had a hard week. I, I, I'd imagine at training uh, for their results last week and. I think it's always tough to win up in Townsville, and I don't think this will be any different. I think the Cowboys will get the win in this one. Yeah, I think the Cowboys will get the win there relatively easily, unfortunately, for Des Hasler. So he'd be looking at a draw trying to work out where he can get a win now. So uh, I reckon the next couple of weeks going to have it hard too. Uh, I think the first time we're going to be looking for a win, probably, this will surprise you, I think it'll be against the Seagulls heading into... Um, before these steps of the Seagulls travelling. I think the Seagulls, it's hard to tell what their form actually looks like until after they play the Panthers. They've got a good team, but um, yeah, I think you might be able to catch them on an off day like what happened to them last week. They actually got caught out there uh, against St George. Uh, you could do that to them again. Pretty sure about that. Uh, and the last game of the round for this weekend is the Raiders against the Eels. I'll call it straight away. I tip the Raiders based on form. Although saying that, like, they've got to do better than getting up 18-0 at halftime and then go, ooh, job done, uh, like what Canterbury's doing now. Uh, 26 nils, 26-20. Um, what are the Roosters doing? Seriously, just roll over and take a loss. So that's what I need to have happen. So although if the Roosters win, that's good for my tips. Um, the, the Raiders, I think the Raiders will beat the Eels because they're at home. I think... The Eels are not sure what to do with uh, Mitchell Moses not being there. So I'm sure you're going to give me some solutions and tell me <laughs> why you think they're going to win. Well, look, this may surprise you, but I'll save it to the end anyway. But look, this will be tough for Parramatta going down to the nation's capital. They don't have the best of records down in Canberra. They've only won a handful of games over the last 10 or so years and they don't have their halfback, Mitchell Moses, as we all know, uh, for two to three months with that fractured foot. So they've put Dylan Brown into halfback, Blaze Talagi in at 5-8. So a lot of people have said that they are pretty similar players. I think last week, Clint Gutherson, he, he wants to win every game he plays. He's captain... He wants to win every game. He's in and everything. I think last week he sort of played his hand a little bit too much and probably didn't have the confidence in the 
um, half and five eight last week against the Tigers, and that's why he got involved. I I hope that he probably leaves this to Dylan Brown. It's Dylan Brown's team at the moment with Mitchell out, and Blaze is just there to help him out as well, or, or run the team around. So hopefully that's the case this week. Um, Bailey Simonson comes back into first grade against his old club in the centre position. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if Brad Arthur goes with Junior Paolo starting or put him back to the bench uh, like he did for the first three weeks. And he changed it up last week and it didn't work. We remove Greg comes back as well. For Canberra, they've lost Zach Hosking, which is a big loss because he's been one of their star players this year. And good news for Raiders fans, Matt Timico has re-signed with the club for a further th- three years, I think it is. So great news there. And as I said, they'll be tough to beat down in the nation's capital. Oh, they will be for sure. So they always are. Um I think they're getting their consistency like really, yeah, they lost last week, but uh, I would think that's a bit of a blip in the radar really for uh, the Raiders. Uh, they could fly over that one. The worst thing was once they lost, they rolled over pretty bad right, and really got smashed, which surprised me probably more than the fact that they lost after being up 18-0. Like they really did get tapped up by Cronulla and ended up being, what, 36-22. So it should never, that should never happen like that. So... It, you can lose the game, being up 18-0, no doubt. But like, like that, that's a pretty, that's one of those mental scar losses that can hurt you, particularly when you get in a similar position again. The same thing's going through the motion, so uh, they can uh, carry on a bit there. Uh, so let's have a look at the table here at the moment at NRL. So it's no surprise at the moment a storm sitting on the top there. Uh, on eight points with Sharks sitting in second at the moment on eight points as well. So I don't think they should be up there. I don't think they're that good. To be honest with you, I genuinely don't think they're uh, a top four side. So if they're, they're going to have to show some more for an extended period of time. Um, particularly, you don't want to be giving up 18 and chasing down whether you've got 36 or not, right? So if you go from behind, you, more often than not, if you're that far behind, your day is pretty much done. So the Sharks want to be more competitive than that if they're going to uh, do anything in the comp. Uh, Dolphins are sitting third on six points with Panthers, so they've got one point on them differential there. Uh, they're looking pretty good. Uh, the Cowboys are sitting in fifth. Uh, West Tigers sixth. Brewster seventh. Uh, then Raiders, Eels, Warriors, uh, Eagles, Broncos and Dragons all on four points right down to 13th there. Bulldogs sitting in fourth. Bulldogs are sitting about where... I think they probably should be at the moment. I think the Bulldogs will push pretty hard and go close to making the top eight, but I don't think they'll make the top eight. I think they'll finish ninth or tenth overall. So, But they're going to need to get on a run too and probably get five or six wins to do that. So like five or six wins not in the season, five or six wins in a row, they're going to have to have a fairly good run to do anything like that because you're going to need consistency in the NRL if you make the finals. Now, if you if you're dropping like one out of every three games, you're you're going to probably miss the finals, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it just showed uh, an example with the West Tigers. I think last year they won four games. This year they've already won two games. So they've already won half of what they won in entirely in 2023. But the games this week, there's a few interesting ones there that'll mix up this top eight. Uh, maybe some teams will get into the top eight and maybe some will drop out but it still is only early days but you want to get those wins early on in the season to as i said before bank those points and uh, you don't want to be chasing your tail during the origin period and also later on in the year a bit like what newcastle did last year by having to win those 10 games in a row to qualify for the finals so uh, you don't yeah. want to. You don't want to be doing that. So, look, uh, yeah. yeah. So, the, funnily enough, the Broncos have got themselves a bit in that position at the moment because they're sitting twelfth at the moment on four points as well. But if they, so right, they lost this week already. If they went and lost next week, and they've got, uh, let's just have a look at this. Make sure I've got the right info here. They've next week the they've Dolphins. got the Dolphins. Yeah. If they drop that game, and let's say they 
Oh, I should be able to beat the Raiders the week after at home. If they drop a couple of these games they're expected to win or even lose the West Tigers in round eight, like if they drop, two, let's say, two of them, three, or even to the Roosters, the next four games are not real hard, right? They could potentially win all four. They could potentially drop two or three of them as well. If they did that, I think their season would nearly be done too. But I think they're a little bit of a better calibre team than that. They really are a very good team. Uh, but they need to get the results, right? Because you, you'll fall behind and you won't be able to drag it back. Like for all money last year before the Roosters, they they just dropped the ball hard last year. So they should have been up near the top of the comp when I predicted them that they'd been a grand final uh, before round one. I genuinely believe that was going to happen. And by round five, they showed me that they looked disinterested. So, and they can the wheels fell off the bus and everything until miles later in the season, until they played Canterbury and got a win. Then that's when they seemed to get things back together. And they had about seven or eight wins in a row or something like that too to uh, just miss out or just get into the top eight. So you can't do that every year to get into the top eight. No, that's it. It'll be certainly an interesting period for the Broncos at the moment uh, with Adam Reynolds out for a few more weeks. I'm not too sure how long Payne Haas and Reese Walsh are out. But then, as I said before, the origin period coming up with a, where they will have a number of players involved in that for Queensland and potentially Payne Haas for New South Wales. So uh, they'll have players involved in that. So... Um, We've seen what happened to Parramatta after the 22 grand final. They failed to make the finals. The Broncos, they were one of the heavy favourites this year. They won't want to go down that path and miss the finals this year. So they want to get some early wins as they can. As it stands at the moment, um, 10 minutes to go. Canterbury are leading 30 points to 20 with 10 minutes to go. There we go. That's what I want to see. You want to see the Bulldogs get back here and get another try on. So uh, stretch it up. Look, see, that sort of stuff, that's the sort of stuff that will pick the team up again because they look like they just lost momentum there for a while. Well, um, Ma- I might be able to get another try on the back of this and then kick on as well. Matty Burton just scored a, a hat-trick, a, his third try, so a hat-trick of tries. I think it was his first or second in... Um, in his career, so three tries to Matty Burton, so uh, they're holding on at the moment. Yeah, it's extra special effort, so I, I do hope the Bulldogs get a win over our tip the Roosters, just uh, they need that momentum. I, I think the Bulldogs are only like, seriously, um, a couple of years off before they're like a real serious premiership force again, like they're getting the good players there and starting to build it and putting it all together, so they're maybe a really good forward and another half or something like that uh, away from really causing a lot of damage or just get some consistency now with the same players. So uh, we'll see what all happens there. All right, so what do you got on over the weekend, Troy? And what do you got coming up on the Paracade podcast and that stuff for anyone that's listening? Yeah, so I have a replay chat of this come out uh, on as well, on Saturday, I'll probably have a, a game day preview of the Parramatta Eels versus the Canberra Raiders. I previously just had a chat with Craig Norenberg's uh, Australian journalist living in New Zealand and massive Canberra Raiders fan, so we did a bit of a game day preview. So that podcast will come out. At the moment, I've got a... a collaboration podcast that i do with george from the quick hands podcast uh called sugar and spice and all things nice where we talk about the issues of rugby league uh week to week uh and i've also got a interview based podcast out with peter zuccolotto as well massive Parramatta eels fans so a lot of content there on the Paraco podcast available on apple spotify youtube all the usual places where you can get your podcasts from yeah that'll that'll be good uh indeed so uh we're probably going to have a chat uh do a pre-record for sunday for anyone wants to know uh about the weekend's football so we'll have something on for sure as well if you're up for it and uh yep. people will be able to catch that uh as usual from uh seven o'clock till eight o'clock on sunday night so 
because uh, you'll be at the football and I've just, yeah, I've got so much stuff on it's stupid at the moment. I just can't <laughs> keep up. I need, if someone wants to get an eighth day a week, uh, don't make don't make it a work day, right? I've already got enough work things going on. I just need another day, right, every week. Well, the Beatles sang happen. about that, didn't they? Eight days a week. <laughs> Yeah, it's right. Yeah, so there's hard days, nights, and all this stuff. So like, I, I feel like I'm going through those motions at the moment. There are way too many things on. Um, yeah, when you when you jump in, if you're going to jump in the deep end, jump in fully when you're doing lots of stuff. Um, and kick and swim for your life, right? Because uh, you want to do your best. But yeah, it, it is very busy. I can tell you. Um, all right, so we'll let you go. Uh, thanks for that, Troy. That Not was a enough of good chat. Always always a good chat. Yep. And uh, yeah, everyone will be able to catch our chat, a pre record of our chat for Sunday night as well here on the weekend sports wrap. Not a problem, Duck Man. Enjoy your footy over the weekend. Yeah, absolutely will do. And I'll chat to you on Sunday. Thanks, Duck Man. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Paracade.